Hi, welcome back to my channel and for today's video, we will be talking for the abstract algebra series, the zero divisors and the units of ring. Thank you so much for your undying support guys and for those who are new to my channel please don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be updated on a lot of videos that I'll be uploading soon. You may also want to comment down there for what topic would you like me to discuss so that I will be able to help you with your online classes. Okay, so let's start now. So let's start first with the definition of the zero divisor. Now, um, it says here that if you have a non-zero element A of a ring R, this A here is said to be left, respectively right, zero divisor if there exists a non-zero B such that this will hold. So this one represents for the left. And this one represents for the right. So meaning to say, you just have to remember in this case that your A is considered as left zero divisor if A here is the left of B. And then B here is the right zero divisor if A here is on the right of B. So that's the point there. Now in the event that an element, say for example the A, is both left and and write zero divisor, then we will just call that element to be zero divisor. So let's consider an example here. So suppose we have um, Z8. So the elements of Z8 here are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So these are integer modulo 8. And that means to say that you have 8 elements inside of the set. Now, um, this plus here refers to the addition modulo 8 and this one here represents the multiplication modulo 8. So if we are going to evaluate, uh, let's say we pick 2 and 4 here. If you multiply 2 and 4, you get 8 and that's congruent to 0. So meaning to say that since the product of 2 and 4 results to 0, then 2 here and 4 here are 0 divisors. Now let's say for example that our R here is this one. So this is actually the direct direct sum of the set of real numbers and the set of, an, of another set of real numbers. So we define this by this if we're going to get the sum of A, B, and C, D. You only have to add entry y, so that's gonna be this one. And um, if you're going to get the product of um, a b with the ordered pair c d, that's gonna be a c b d. So that's gonna be um, entry wise. So observe that for a specific element, let's say I have three zero uh, multiplied by zero one you get 3 times 0, 0 times 1, and that's exactly 0, 0. This 0, 0 here is our additive identity of this R here. Then this means to say that 3, 0, and 0, 1 are 0 divisors. So another example, let's consider um, M2 of R. So that means this is actually... Uh, 2x2 two two matrices. So this is the set of 2x2 two two matrices having re real entries. So if you would like to consider you have A here, let's say 1, 1, 0, 0, and you have B here which is 0, 0, 0, 1. If you're gonna take the multiplication of these two matrices here, the result is 0, 0, 0, 0. However, if you multiply this, um, B and A here, you'll get 0, 0, 1, 0. So if you notice, of, co of course, we already know that from linear algebra that uh, multiplication of matrices is not commutative. So meaning to say that AB is not the same as BA. So in this case, 
when you multiply A and B here, you get 0, 0, 0, 0. And if you multiply B and A here, you get 0, 0, 1, 0. So meaning in this case, our A here is a left 0 divisor, but A in this case is not a right 0 divisor. See, so meaning to say that A is only left 0 divisor. B on the other hand is a right 0 divisor. That's it. So we will consider a remark here saying that if you're given with a ring R, um, this R here has no zero divisors, then this will hold if and only if the right and left constellations loss hold in R. So that is um, for every A, B, C in R with your A not equal to zero, then that's A, B equals A, C or B A equals C A implies B equals C. So we will show the proof on this one. So let's start first with the forward direction. So starting with A B equals A C, this will imply that A B minus A C is zero. And I can write this in fact as A times B minus C equals zero. This is left distributive law and um, I can have B minus C equals 0 here since of course I considered my R here that has no 0 divisor that means to say your A is not 0 so meaning to say this one is B equals C similar fashion goes that if I'm gonna have B A equals C A this will end up having B equals C that's it now, let's go to the backward direction. So, suppose um, B, A, B equals 0 for some A, B in R. And in this case, A is not 0. Then, um, A, B equals 0. That's the same as A times 0. This implies further that our B here is 0. This is by right cancellation law with a not equal to zero and um similar fashion goes with um if b is not zero then your a is zero therefore r has no zero divisor that's it so we will now go to with the concept and definition of the invertible or the unit so we say that um an element A of a ring R with identity, this one, is said to be left or right and vertical if there exists an element C, respectively B, such that CA equals 1R or AB equals 1R. Now, your 1R here, remember, is a unit element or the identity element with respect to multiplication. So, um, the hint here is we call such as left invertible if it is on if A is on the right and we call that as right invertible if A is on the left so um, the C here in this case or the B because we have either C or the B here are um, this is called the left or right inverse of A and if A here, that is both left and right invertible, we said that it is invertible. Some books would call this as a union. So by this, we will introduce some remarks here uh, about this unit or the invertible element. First re remark says that the left and right inverses of a unit A in a ring R with identity coincide. So what does it mean? Remember that if I'm going to write A, B, here equals 1R. So this thing here, this one here is right invertible. I'm gonna write this um, CA. So this one here is left invertible. Now, uh, our goal here is to end up these two things here, this one and this one to be equal. So observe that I can write this as, um, you know that B here is equal to 1R times B. Okay. And on 1R, remember this is equal to C, I'm sorry, C A times B. So I substitute 1R by C A, by this one here. And then I have 
the fact that C, A, B, because uh, of course, the associativity holds in R. And so A, B is the same as 1, R, and so this is equal to C. So therefore, I have a conclusion that by B here and my C coincide. So that's the message of the first remark. So the second remark says that the set of units in a ring R forms a group under multiplication. So let's do this. So let's say our R here is a ring with identity. So we, it has a unit. And then my U here is that U here be the set of all units in R. So if I'm gonna let elements here, so let's say let A be in U. So this means to say that A and B are units in R because they are element in U. So there exists X, Y in R such that I have AX equals 1R and BY equals 1R. Now remember R is a ring here so therefore the product of Y and X here is also an element of the ring R. So there, um, I'm gonna write it here. YX is an element of R with so I'm gonna multiply A, B here and um, Y, X here because they're elements of R. And that's the same as A, B, Y, X. And that's the same as A, 1, R, X. This is the same as A, X which is equal to 1, R. Meaning to say, this is close under multiplication for U. Um, observe that those elements in U are actually coming from R. So it reflects the fact that since R is associative, so U also is associative. So those identity elements and inverses elements from R are, are also present from U from the fact that U is defined to be the set of all units in R. So therefore, this U forms a group under multiplication. That's it. So that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. So if you have any questions or clarification, you can comment down there so that I would know and we can discuss on that. So guys, and thank you for all your support. We will still be continuing with this abstract algebra series. Have a great day. Please.